Celtics, the Warriors would beat the Lakers, and the Grizzlies would beat the Spurs. I was right on just one there, and as far as the second round of the plans, I predicted that the Wizards would beat the Pacers and that the Warriors would beat the Grizzlies. So I guess I went 50-50 on the first round with the Miami Heat and the Milwaukee Bucks. This should be a very fun one to watch for many different reasons. The Heat struggled mightily at the start of the season, but have come on strong as of late by the superb play of Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Their bench, however, is still lacking to provide a deep run in the playoffs, in my opinion. The Bucks have Giannis Antetokounmpo, who can carry a lot of weight. He's also assisted by Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, who are effective scorers in this league. I believe the Bucks will win this series, but it won't be easy. This could easily go six to seven games. The next series that I want to touch on are the Boston Celtics versus the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets did everything they could this season to turn themselves into a super team, and they were pretty successful doing just that from adding James Harden in trade earlier this season to signing Blake Griffin after his buyout from the Pistons, pairing them with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, they have a very stout lineup that can score with the best of them. Their one downside is they can't defend anyone at the power forward or center positions. They are very vulnerable there, so when they match up against a team who has strong players at those positions, they have been beating the Nets more times than not. The Sussex are a team that really unperformed nearly all year long. Outside of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, no one really stepped up to be that consistent third scorer that they needed. Kemba Walker was that guy every so often, but due to injury or poor play, he just hasn't been consistent by any means. And with Jalen Brown still dealing with an injury, even if he's able to play, he will not be able to play at his normal high level. So I see the Nets winning the series in five. The next matchup is between the Washington Wizards and the Philadelphia 76ers. They are tasked with a tough and talented 76ers team. The Wizards have their fair share of talented players as well, with Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook and the young Rua Hachimura, who has played well since being drafted just two years ago. With Beal's scoring ability and Westbrook as the premier facilitator, this team went on a run that put them right in the position for a play-in game. The 76ers have been playing well all season long even with the absences of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid for small stretches. But when all are healthy, this team's lineup can take over a game. Behind Embiid's MVP-type play, Simmons' ability to probe the defense and find the open man, and Tobias Harris's ability to knock down threes and work you in the post will be too much for this Wizards team to handle. I have the 76ers in five. And to round out the Eastern Conference, we have the Atlanta Hawks against the New York Knicks. The Hawks are a team that lives and dies with Trey Young. With Young's proficient play, he can drive and kick to an open shooter, who is usually Bogdanovich, who is a great three-point shooter, or shovel it off to Clint Capello, who could just finish at the rim. The Knicks have a slightly different approach. Outside from their budding star in Julius Randle, the Knicks offer a much more balanced offensive attack from all of their players. They also play a suffocating defensive scheme that irritates most of their opponents. In this matchup, I'm giving the Knicks the advantage in six games. On to the Western Conference, where we take a look at the Dallas Mavericks versus the LA Clippers. The Mavericks, if you haven't heard or have been living under a rock for the past few years, have Luka Doncic, the most exciting player in the NBA right now. Coming into the league just a few years ago at 19, he was something to be seen. After having a couple of years to really figure out how he wants to craft his game at the NBA level, he is a bona fide MVP in the making. Pair that with the rejuvenated Kristaps Porzingis, and you have a very good Dallas Mavericks team. The Clippers have two of their own pretty prolific scorers in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. As most might remember, playoff P was pretty terrible last year for the Clippers, leaving Kawhi to have to do most of the work himself. This year, I'm anticipating a better showing from Paul George as the Clippers win this very tough series against the Mavericks, probably going seven games. Next, we have the LA Lakers versus the Phoenix Suns. Health issues have plagued the Lakers all year with both LeBron and Davis missing significant time during this year. The Suns have been healthy and pretty outstanding all year long, with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton playing incredibly well with the ever-consistent Chris Paul at the helm. It appears that this team can make a great run this year. I'm picking the Chris Paul-led Suns in this series that could easily go six to seven games. Next, we have the Portland Trailblazers versus the Denver Nuggets. It's still a great matchup. 
had Jamal Murray not gotten hurt and he would be playing, I believe this series would be just a bit more exciting. And with him being out, there's only so much that the MVP, Nikola Djokic, can do. The Trailblazers got healthy at the right time with CJ McCollum and Joseph Nurkic coming back with more than a month left to play in the regular season. Just enough time to play off any rust that they might have had during their extended time off. I think the Trailblazers should handle this series in five games. And lastly, we have the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Utah Jazz. The Grizzlies have played surprisingly well this year, as well as their play-in victories over the Spurs and the Warriors. John Morant will take this team very far during the tenure of his career. I just don't believe that it'll be going very far this year. The Jazz have been playing too well all year round with steady from their big names like Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, just to name a couple. I believe the Jazz will win this series in five. All right, on to the next round. Based on my predictions, I have the Jazz playing against the Clippers. The Clippers have plenty of veteran experience on their team that can carry some serious weight in, a, in the playoffs. Unfortunately for them, I don't see them getting past the stacked Jazz team. I'm picking the Jazz to advance to the Western Conference Finals. Now we have the Suns against the Trailblazers. The Trailblazers have been a team that are always good enough to make the playoffs, but never good enough to make any serious run. This year feels different, however. This year, I see them making a deep run in the playoffs. With the scoring combination of Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, who are arguably the best scoring backcourt in the NBA, there's no reason not to expect them to win. The Suns are still very young with minimal playoff experience on their roster outside of Chris Paul. You can only imagine how far he can take that team. In my opinion, he can only take them to the conference semifinals. To close out the Western Conference, we have the Utah Jazz versus the Portland Trail Blazers. This matchup is one that I don't believe anyone would be disappointed with. Both teams are filled with accomplished scorers with some true low post big men. Unfortunately for the Trail Blazers, I don't feel they have enough balanced scoring to compete with the Jazz. The Utah Jazz's ability to have any number of their starters or bench players come in and make a big shot and take over the game makes them a matchup nightmare for everyone. I'm picking the Jazz to represent the Western Conference in the NBA Finals this year. On to the Eastern Conference with the 76ers versus the Knicks. This series should be fun for many reasons. Will the Knicks' aggressive defensive mentality be able to lock down on the 76ers? Will the big three of the 76ers actually step up and bring this team to the Conference Finals for the first time since the 2000-2001 season? Personally, I believe the Knicks will give the 76ers everything they want and then some to beat the 76ers. It will, however, be some excellent experience for this young New York Knicks team that doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. The other Eastern Conference matchup are the Bucks versus the Nets. The Bucks are a team that are trying to do everything in their power to build a championship team around their MVP player in Giannis. They have failed to do that thus far. They did, however, add some offensive weapons to help Giannis in his pursuit of an NBA championship. Unfortunately for them, they are going against a stacked Brooklyn Nets team that did nearly everything that they could to bring in the best available players with NBA champions Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. The addition of James Harden was huge for them, clearly. It also appears that after some growing and moments where not all three were healthy and at the same time, that they have found a way to play together and allow this team to meet their full potential. They are a tough matchup for the Bucks team that just doesn't have enough scoring ability, in my opinion, to win. I'm picking the Nets. For the Eastern Conference Finals, we have the Brooklyn Nets versus the Philadelphia 76ers, a matchup that I'm certain many begged for at the start of the playoffs. Both teams can score, and both teams have their own versions of a big three that can take over the game. The advantage, in my opinion, is with the 76ers, as one of their big three is a potential MVP center, Joel Embiid. Not to mention the Nets cannot defend at the center position, or any position for that matter. I'm picking the 76ers to make it to the NBA Finals. That finally leads us to the NBA Finals matchup between the 76ers and the Jets. Now, I know it may seem a little bit of a cop-out picking both teams that won their respective conferences to make the NBA Finals. Well, sometimes having the best season means that you're the better team that will make it to the Finals. This matchup that can go down to the wire in every game with probably a handful of overtime games to boot. Both teams have the ability to score. If they couldn't, they wouldn't be here. You've heard me talk about each team during the course of this video, so I feel I no longer need to lay out my reasons why I think they should win. So with that, I'm picking the Utah Jazz to be your 2020-2021 NBA Finals champions. Well, there you have it. 
Those are my NBA playoff predictions. Thank you for tuning into the House Report. If you agree or disagree with any of my predictions, please leave a comment on this video explaining why you agree or disagree with me. And for all my betting friends out there, remember, you win some and you'll lose some. But the house always wins.